Right, hello there guys, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Um, I've literally just recorded this, so... I mean, I just spent 20 minutes recording this video, and I actually failed to hit record on OBS, so I've just spent 20 minutes talking to myself. Nonetheless, I've got to get this out there, so let's go ahead and start again. So what we're covering today is how we get images on the hood. So what you can see here is I actually have four panes, or I can reduce it to two. And we're going to go ahead and just quickly demonstrate what these do. Now, whenever I enter the pane and press E on this one, it says image one. And when I enter this pane, it says image two on the hood. Now, these are both the exact same blueprint. However, they show different images. Let me just go ahead and basically mute this. I don't need to be hearing static. Um, okay, so yeah, they, they are the same blueprint. However, they show two different images. Um, so there's two blueprints, actually. One's a widget blueprint and one is a blueprint class. And I'm going to go ahead and show you actually how we went about creating this. So first thing I'm going to do is remove these from the game. Remove all my widget blueprints. And we head into the first person character. And I'm going to re revert the changes that I made in here too. So let's start afresh. Okay, so I've got a first person project here. The only thing that I have different in this project than what you would have in a brand new first person character starter pack is I have these two images. Now these are simply 500 pixel by 500 pixel images. One says image one, one says image two. Um, then if we go ahead and preview that, there you go, just to prove it. Go ahead and pre preview this one. Uh, there you go. So I've got two images, 500 by 500 pixels. Now what I would recommend that you do in your project is keep so let's imagine that basically we're building this for a note system. So you saw there when we pressed E on the screen, we got those images up. So imagine you've got notes hidden around the map that kind of tell the story. Um, what you've got now is basically, um, so you can build this blueprint class and you can have the player move around the map, press E on those blueprints, and he can read these notes that kind of tell him the story. So if you don't want to do voice acting, you want to do it this way, go make those notes in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever software you have, but as a general rule of thumb, keep them all the same size, so 800 pixels by 1000 pixels or, you know, whatever you need to do, try and keep them the same size, it's going to make this side of things a hell of a lot easier for you. Okay, so, let's get started. The first thing I want to do is go into the first person blueprint, into the blueprints folder, and open the first person character. Now we only make, want to make one simple change in here, and that's to add a variable with the, date, the variable type integer, and we're going to name this um, pane. Oh, actually, we're going to name this image index. We're going to compile that. Now, one thing we have to make sure we do over here is make it a public variable. So come on over here, untick that eyelid, open those eyes, make that a public variable, and that's it. We are done for the first person character. We can close this and not look at that again. Now, let's go ahead and quickly make something uh, to put those things on. So, you know, I had the square on the wall there. Let's go ahead and drag a box out. Quickly squash that down. Now this mesh, I imagine you'll make it using Google SketchUp or Blender or whatever you need to make it in. And it'll probably look more like a note than a blank board. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and turn this BSP into a static mesh. I'm not going to bother naming it. And on the static mesh, I'm going to go ahead and make this into a blueprint. So instead of using my box static mesh, you're going to have your own blueprint. So this will be note BP. So you've got your own static mesh of a note here made it into a blueprint you presented with the viewport. Now, we need to add a component to that. Let's move this microphone a bit further away. It seems to be picking up too much noise. Um, okay, so we're going to add a component to that. And it's going to be a box collision. We're going to move it forwards up through there. Scale it up a bit. So basically, when the player enters this, as opposed to when the player runs right up to the note and touches the actual mesh, is when they enter this trigger volume here. So we want to do a couple of things. You can get rid of begin play, you can get rid of tick. We're going to be using actor begin overlap, actor end overlap, this collision one here. And we're also going to be using a letter of your choice. In this video, I'm going to use the letter E. Now, we need to do a couple of things first of all. On actor begin overlap, we, all, we need to enable the input. And on end overlap, we need to disable the input. That allows us to go to different objects and interact with them using the same letters without you know, coming back over here and interacting with this one. So you have to be in range to interact with it. The player controller is going to move over here and we're going to get the player controller. Compile that. Okay, so far so good. Now let's take a look at the letter E. 
when we press the letter E, we're going to do a flip-flop. Now what a flip-flop does is essentially it does A and then B and then A and then B and flip-flops back and forth between the two, hence the name. Now the first thing we need to be doing is pausing this blueprint here, actually. We need to pause this here. We can do one more thing while we're here, really quick, which is create a variable over here with the integer index. Or image, or rather. Let's call it image. Makes things a bit easier. And this too needs to be a, uh, a public variable, so we need to untick this box over here. But for now, we need to come out of the note blueprint and go ahead and create another blueprint. This is going to be of the type user interface. So right click in your content browser, user interface, and a widget blueprint. Has to be a widget blueprint. We're going to name this note widget. Now, inside the note widget, you're going to be presented with this designer layout. Now, imagine that this is your screen. You know, 1920 pixels across, 1080 pixels high. Um, so, where do you want your image, right? Let's just drag this on at the minute. And let's change the anchor from top left to center. By this drop down box over here, I want to change it to the center anchor. The size needs to be changed to match that of your images. So I'm going to put 500 by 500 in. However, the value that you'll put in the size X and the size Y will correspond to the value uh, of the size of your image. So if your image is 800 by 800, put 800 by 800 in here. Let's move this up and I'm just going to eyeball it for now. Instead of trying to align it, I'm just going to put it roughly in the middle there. Okay, that's fine. So we've basically got a blank slot that can hold an image now in the center of our screen. What we need to do now is say, okay, instead of a blank image, let's put stuff in there. So come on over here to where you would normally add the image. Now I can do this in a fixed way where I simply open the drop down box, open the properties, put a crosshair in there, or in our case, put a test in there. But you know, I want to change this depending on something we set earlier. So instead of setting this, we're gonna leave this blank and we're gonna bind it instead. So we're going to create a binding. Now what this does, this return value here corresponds to setting this here. So instead of setting it manually, instead of setting it in a fixed way out here, we can change this dynamically as the game goes on by using these kind of blueprints over here. So what do you want to do in the blueprints? Well, the first thing you want to do off this execution pin is cast to first, well not cat, cast to first person character. Now you remember we created a variable over there on the first person character named image index or in index or something. Let's have a look. It wasn't an index. Yes, it was. It was image index or both of those words. We want to get that image index at the minute. It'll be set to zero, but we can change that later on, which will change the outcome of this. So the image index, we're going to hook that up in a minute. So, you know, I've kind of left a couple of loose ends around at the minute. Let's just hook this up here by getting the player character. So we're saying, okay, let's get the player character and let's cast it to the first person character and we'll we'll figure this out in a minute. So for the time being, let's hop on back over to the note blueprint. So, you know, we got ready with this flip-flop, but we never actually did anything with it. The first thing we want to do, so off the A execution pin, is we want to create a widget. And the widget class is going to be the note widget. The return value, okay, so we've created this widget. It's not actually on the screen, it's just in cyberspace somewhere. So with the return value there, we need to add that to the viewport, like so. Simple command, add it to the viewport. So now you've got this widget that's flowing around in hyperspace. We call the second function here, and bam, you know, it's stuck to your screen. Instead of being a floating piece of paper out in space somewhere, it's now stuck to the visor of your space helmet if you're a spaceman traveling through cyberspace. These analogies are getting a bit out of hand. Let's get back to the blueprints. Okay, so on B, when you press E again, you want to simply remove from parent. So off the return value here, we're going to call remove from parent. And we're going to hook this execution pin up to B here. That's pretty much it. Um, it's not it at all, actually. Got that totally wrong. So this image variable over here is going to be set out in the world. So let's just move this aside a minute and take a look at our new blueprint. This is the uh, note blueprint over here. So it's this thing over here, but as a blueprint here. And you can see that we have a default value down here named image and if you remember we have oh, we have it oh come on we have a value here also named image with a public variable 
So what we can do is we can change this depending on the instance. So let's say I've got two copies of these, right? I've got two notes ready to be put on the wall or whatever. This one can have a value of zero of one even, while this one has a value of zero. They are independent of each other. And that's how we can cleverly do this so that we don't have to have 50 different blueprints for 50 different notes. We can have two blueprints for 10,000 notes or for two notes, you know? This is the clever way of doing it. So let's bring them back over the note blueprint. So bring that back over. So this remember image here, this at the minute is set to zero for this one. But if I was editing the other one, it would have a value of one. So this changes, you know, depending on where it is in the world and what you as a programmer set it to. Now off the enable input thing, we want to do one more thing. We want to cast to the first person character again. I'm going to do that the same way that we did in the in the widget blueprint. We're going to get the player character. And I remember on the first person character, we set up that value. And in fact, it's the same value that we called over here. So we called image index here. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the image index here. So set image index. So we're going to set the image index or the variable on the first person character to that of the variable of the local image over here. So it may be getting a bit complex now. Let's imagine, um, let's play a game of Chinese whispers. Okay, so Bill is stood next to Sally, right? I tell Bill, okay, Bill, at the start of the game, I say, Bill, okay, the number is one, all right? So when, when I touch Bill now, I overlap with Bill. Bill says to Sally, or the first person character, okay, Sally, in your memory, now remember that the number is one. That's the number I've been given. So he passes it along here. And now Sally remembers the number one. So it's kind of again, Chinese whispers, we're passing this number along. So we've set the image there on the first person character. Now, let's, let's, let's track that number for a moment, okay? So we set it out here, down here at the defaults. So we set it to zero in this case, all right? We then go and touch this box as the player. That zero gets passed to the first person character. So instead of the box holding it, now as the character, we're holding the number zero. Now, when we press E, we spawn a note widget blueprint. And if you head on back over to the binding over here, the note widget blueprint says, okay, hey player, you want me to create a widget blueprint? Okay, well, I need some information from you. I need the value of that number that you got from the box. So he goes, okay, the number I got from the box is the image index over here. And that is gonna be something we're gonna deal with in a moment. Now, what are we gonna do with that number? Well, that number, in case you haven't guessed already, is going to correspond to the index on an array. So up here in variables, not local variables, we need this in the variable uh, confined to the class as opposed to a variable confined to the function. So up here in variables, we're gonna add a variable, and this is going to be of the type texture 2D. And this texture 2D is basically going to refer to your images. Now, one thing you need to remember to do on, on all variables, first of all, is you're gonna give it a, a realistic name. So this is going to be image array, okay? And then you're gonna to wanna to tick this box here. So instead of it being a single image, it's now an array of images. So it's, it's a variable that holds multiple variables, an array. Okay, so arrays have elements. So once you've compiled that real quick, if you look down here, the default value has zero elements. So this array at the minute is an empty box. And we've got two images, so we're gonna add two elements to this array. And if you hear the drop down box, we now have an option in here to set that. So zero, I'd like to be test one, and index one, I would like to correspond to test two. These are my image file names. So now we have a box that contains both images as opposed to you know having a variable for each image and then selecting it based on that. So we're gonna bring this image array out here. We're going to get it. And then we're going to get from it. So we're going to call get again. Now this is where the image index hooks in. So remember, Bill, so remember, okay, we passed that image on down through the, through the hierarchy or whatever. And we called it again when we created this new widget. And he says, okay, I'm zero. So we're gonna get the one that corresponds to zero. Now if we look in the array, the one that corresponds to the zero, which is this number here, is test one. If I was a value of two, I would be getting this image here. If I was a value of one rather, remember with programming you count zero, one, two, as opposed to one, two, three. So the image index, if it was one, I'd get the second one down, which corresponds to this number here, 
test two. Okay. Simple enough. Um, kind of simple enough. Now that you've got this 2D texture, we need to turn that into a brush because this return value here is a slate brush structure and a 2D texture is not a brush. You see, we can't hook that up there. So off this, we need to make a brush from texture. So make brush from texture. And the width and the height here need to correspond to the width and the height of the image. So remember I said to keep all your images images the same. This is where it really comes in handy. So I had 500 by 500 pixels. And I can simply now hook the return value up from this texture to the return value of the brush over here. I can hit compile. And now everything should work. There's only one thing I would recommend doing is if you noticed on the video at the beginning, when I actually backed away from the note, the note was removed from my screen. The only thing is if you don't do this little, this last thing here, if you press E at the notes, so let's say you go up to this note, okay, in your game, you press E, you can view it on your screen, you walk away from the note, it's still stuck on your screen unless you hook up this execution pin here to remove from parent. So what that basically does is when the character walks away from it, when the overlap is ended, we disable the input, but we also remove the widget from the viewport and says, okay, you're not in range of me anymore. I'm actually going to, you know, I'm going to disable you. Okay. So all looking good there. Let's go ahead and give that a test. So if you remember correctly, this one, this instance over here had a value of zero. This instance here had a value of one. And remember that's per 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 instance. So you see, I've got note BP1, note BP2, and note BP3. These are all the exact same blueprint. However, each one holds a different value. So one, zero, one. Let's hit play, run up to them, and press the letter E on our keyboard, and we receive image two there. If I go to the second one, which had a different number, you see that I receive image one. And back over here, the same one as the first, image two, there it is. So if you want to expand on this, let's say you have 50 notes for your game, you'd come in here into the image array and you would add 50 elements and you would set your image, image one, image two, image three. It sounds like a lot of work setting 50. However, the thing is, once you've done it once, you'll never have to do it again. Okay, so let's say you've got a thousand notes in your game. It's going to be a hell of a task, right? I mean, you've already spent two weeks making 2000 notes, right? With all different texts on them. You know, just take another day, add 2000 to this thing, put up with it. But once you've done it, you've done it. They are stored in that array forever or until you delete the blueprint. So that's basically it. All we've done is we've stored it in an array. We've set the in, we've called, we've set the index out here. So index one, index zero on this one, index one on this one. And then that index is passed from, from the, from the box here to the player, from the player to the widget, and the widget then brings up the corresponding image on the screen. So that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. I hope it's been informative, I hope it's explained a lot, and I hope it's also showed you some transferable skills that you can take away from this specific project, and also put into your own projects using arrays and getting from them and, you know, setting this up once. So it's quite, I think it's quite clever how we've managed to make only two blueprints that can show potentially hundreds of thousands of images using still only the two blueprints. The only thing we need to make is the images. Okay, guys, so yeah, as I said, we're going to wrap that up there. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope that actually this time it's recorded. I'm looking over that screen and it says stop recording, start recording. So I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it's all gone okay this time. Um, as always, if the video has helped you, please do give it a thumbs up. It does help the channel. Give it a comment. Let me know what you thought. And as always, the big important subscribe button. That means a lot to me, guys. Thanks very much. And as always, I'll see you on the next video.